Hi everybody, thank you for joining our virtual cooking class today. We're just gonna give it another minute or so just to let everybody get on and get situated. Um, you're gonna need your recipe, your equipment list. Um, hopefully you have all your groceries, take all your ingredients out. And um, before we get started cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. So if you haven't done that already, now would be a good time to do that. All right, I think we are good to go ahead and get started. Um, so hello everybody, thank you so much to for joining our virtual cooking class today. Um, I'm Fessel Foods Mealtime Mentor, Lauren. Um, I'm also a registered dietitian and I'm excited to be joining you today from the Fessel Foods Test Kitchen. Um, thank you for joining. This class is part of our Family Meals Month mini-series, um, which we've been celebrating Family Meals Month all throughout the month of September. Um, we wanna thank Coca-Cola for sponsoring our class today. Um, we hope you're all ready to get cooking. We have a great recipe to show you today. Um, and what's also great about this recipe is we're gonna you know, get it all prepared. It's gonna cook this afternoon and it's gonna be good to go for dinner time, which is awesome. Um, just a couple of housekeeping notes quickly um, before we jump in. Each of your microphones are gonna remain muted throughout the class. However, if you do have questions or comments, we definitely wanna hear from you. So please go ahead and use the Q&A function. Um, there's a little button on the bottom. Please use, use this instead of that chat function so that we can more easily track the questions coming in and just make sure that all the participants can see the responses. Mealtime mentors, um, Casey and Jenny are on the chat today. They're ready to answer your questions. Um, and if you're taking this class on demand and have questions, please reach out to us via askvesseldietitians.com. All right, so let's get started. Today we're making a Coca-Cola spoon roast in the slow cooker. So to get started, um, we need to eat, have a pan over here, a skillet, large skillet. We need to sear that spoon roast. Um, so we're gonna add some oil right to our skillet. Get that heat it up here. So we're gonna just need to let that go for a minute just to make sure it gets nice and hot before we can add our spoon roast. Um, so like I mentioned today, we're using the slow cooker, which is so nice because we're gonna get all this prepared. We're gonna get in our slow cooker. It's gonna cook this afternoon. And it's gonna be good to go for dinner. And at least for me, the slow cooker is so nice, especially in the fall for some reason. Um, just like the aromas that fill your home when you are making something and it is nice to be able to either prep something in the morning and let it cook all day um, or even just over the lunch period and um, let it cook throughout the afternoon and it's ready to go. Um, so it, it does take a lot of um, the cooking part out of preparing dinner, which is really nice. And that's what's great about this recipe. We're gonna prep it. It doesn't take too long to prep. Um, and then there's really nothing else to do besides just let it cook in the slow cooker throughout the afternoon. All right, this is looking pretty good over here. I'm just gonna kind of swirl my oil around you may want to do that as well. We do want to make sure this pan is nice and hot because we are searing the spoon roast. Um, so you can grab your spoon roast. You're going to need to remove it from the packaging. Um, so this is an unseasoned spoon roast today that we're using. Many of you are probably familiar with our burgundy pepper spoon roast, um, which is one of our most popular signature items at festival. Um, what's great about the spoon roast is that it's an incredibly tender piece of meat. Um, so where it gets its name is that after cooking it, you can essentially carve it with a spoon. That's how tender it is. So it's definitely one of our very popular items at festival and for good reason. And typically the roasts come in about two to three pound pieces. So if you could find something close to that three pounds, that would work well for the recipe, but we can definitely make anything work today. All right, so my pan looks hot here. My oil is going. So I'm gonna remove the roast here from the packaging and I'm just gonna set it right in the pan. Should hear a nice sizzle. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands because I did handle that raw meat. You'll definitely want to do the same. And we're gonna let that meat sear on all sides. We want all sides to be nice and brown. So it's just gonna be a few minutes on each side. And what that does is it really locks in the flavors, the juices, um, and the moisture content of the roast. It's an optional step, but we definitely would recommend it 
just because of all the extra flavor that will come from the roast even after it goes into the slow cooker. So yes, I know it's one extra step, it's one extra dish, but I promise you it's definitely worth it. So we're just gonna kinda keep an eye on that. We're gonna let that um, go. While it's in here, I'm just gonna season it with some salt and pepper. I probably should have done that on the other side, but we can do one side and season the other side after we turn it. But again, this is just gonna give it a little bit of, of extra flavor since it is an unseasoned roast. But we're gonna be adding um, some good flavors in our slow cooker as well. So this is definitely gonna be flavorful enough, don't worry. While we let that go, again, we need just a couple minutes um, on each side till it's brown. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start um, chopping up our celery. So today we're using a, an entire bunch of celery. I've already washed this. I'm just gonna quickly take off all of our different ribs. good go ahead and trim off the bottoms and then the the leafy tops as well so we're kind of just using the nice part of the celery cut off the bottoms and then we'll quickly check on our roast here so the veggies that we're using in today's roast are very traditional, I'd say, to a typical like pot roast or beef roast. Um, but what's great about them is that they're customizable. So if you're like, mm, I don't like celery, don't add it. Definitely optional. All right. Check on the roast here. That looks good. So you can go ahead and turn it. And we're going to let that go again just a couple more minutes to make sure that it's nice and brown. All right, so from here we can just go ahead and start chopping up our um, celery into um, probably just like a little quarter inch or even less slices. Um, the smaller the pieces, the more evenly it's going to cook throughout. We want to try to make all our veggies somewhat uniform in size so that they do cook evenly today in our slow cooker. And I like that this recipe uses this the entire bunch of celery. That way we don't have any leftover that eventually just goes bad in the fridge, right? And then you throw it away. Might as well add it, right? Use it all up. Uh, next, we're going to add four large carrots. I have five carrots here because my carrots are a little smaller, so you can kind of make a judgment call on exactly how many you want to add. Um, but what I've done already is I've just washed them, and I did take a vegetable peeler quick and just peel off um, the outer skin. That's completely up to you. Um, but you do just want to wash them. So you can go ahead and just chop into nice, smaller, round pieces. And like I said, mine are pretty small carrots. They're pretty thin um, in diameter. If you have like a really big carrot, like a really thick one, you may want to slice the pieces in half as well. Just so those pieces don't get too big, we want to make sure that they cook well. Okay, before I cut my other carrots, I just want to check and see. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to turn my roast off the heat here. I'm just going to let it kind of hang out in the pan. My sides are all browned. It looks good. Um, but I'm just going to leave it here for now so we can finish um, with our veggies. I'm going to go back to my carrots over here. I always cut off the tip. Um, it just always looks like really sad and kind of withered up a little bit, so I always just kind of disregard that, but completely up to you. And I'm just using a chef's knife for cutting up everything today. I think a lot of people think like, ooh, bigger knife, too hard to handle. Um, but a larger, sharp knife is actually safer than using a dull, small knife. 
you just don't have to really include much effort when you're cutting when it's a sharp knife. A chef knife is really so versatile. You can use it for really any type of veggies. We use it for pretty much all of our cooking. All right, so I've got those two. Um, I also need to chop up an onion. Um, so I have just a yellow onion here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off the end. For me, I just always do that right away because it kind of helps get started on at least an entrance into peeling. Gives me at least somewhere to start where I can start peeling off the outer layer. So you want to get into that nice white part or yellowish, creamish part of the yellow onion. Perfect. So once you have your onion all cleaned up, now we also have that flat surface. So I'm going to put my onion down on that slight side with, that we cut off on the nice flat surface. And then I'm just going to cut it in half. I'm not going to cut through the stem. I'm just going to cut on one side of it. So we have two nice pieces here. One has a stem, one doesn't. And then from here, I'm gonna take this flat side. I'm gonna start here. And I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm gonna go through and just make little cuts almost all the way through the onion, but not quite, so that it still stays together. So if you can see here, it's still like connected. It's not all falling apart because it's still together there at the bottom. And it's almost like a fan, like you're almost like fanning it out where you have all these different pieces. So now that I have all those cuts in, I'm just going to turn it back, starting with that flat side again, and I'm just going to go through and slice the other way so that it's easy to dice. And you basically can just get all the way until the end, and then from here, you can either toss that part or I just go through and add a couple more slices. So I just want to use it all up. And then you can do the same with your other half. Go ahead, go around, make your slices. And the side that has a stem is a little bit easier because you're most likely not going to go all the way through since it has that stem to keep everything connected. Um, but then turn it, go ahead and make some nice slices the other way. We get a perfectly chopped onion. Super simple. And I know there's so many different way to, ways to cut an onion, cut different veggies. So of course, if you have another method that you prefer, definitely use that. All right, next we have some cloves of garlic. So we have four cloves. My cloves are like, these are really big. Um, but I love garlic, so I'm gonna chop them all up. So I'm just cutting off the little stem on each one. I'm gonna disregard that. And then here, when it comes to garlic, really my best advice is just start chopping. <laughs> and just keep going until it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. I don't have like a great method for cutting it. You just kind of kind of start somewhere and then just keep going. I'm just get them all kind of somewhat chopped up and go from there. Just keep chopping away, mincing it until it's nice and small. A good method to use once you kind of get it all somewhat chopped up um, is to keep the sharp point, top part of the knife, on the cutting board. And keep your hand on it to prevent it from coming up and then just kind of going back and forth, up and down, and kind of like a rocking motion with your knife, just chopping all the way through. And then you just kind of bring them all back together. Try a couple different angles. And again, just keep working until it gets smaller and smaller until it's nice, pretty small pieces. That rocking motion is good. That's looking pretty good to me. Maybe give it one more go around here. Perfect. All right. So I can move that over here. This is all going to go in at the same time. 
And our last veggies that we're using today are some potatoes. Um, so these are just your regular potatoes. Use whatever potatoes you like. Um, but essentially with the potatoes, I'm just gonna try to cut them into similar size pieces to our, our carrots and celery here. Just again, so that everything cooks uniformly. We wanna make sure our potatoes are nice and soft um, by the time our roast is done in about, we're gonna cook it for about three hours on high. Um, but if you wanted to cook it on low, we didn't test it that way, but you can definitely let it go for longer. So like we mentioned earlier, we were talking about Family Meals Month in September. Um, we've been celebrating all month long. It's crazy that now we are at the end of the month already. I feel like this month just flew by. Um, but with September being Family Meals Month, um, it's obviously a great time to talk about meals together that we can enjoy as a family and it's definitely a struggle when everybody's very busy and it could be hard to find things that are easy to make especially during the week and this is one of those meals that is a great family meal option it, it feeds a crowd it's a pretty traditional meal i'd say um and it's just a great opportunity to gather around the table and just enjoy a meal together. There's so many benefits, especially for kids when it comes to everything from social to emotional to health and wellness benefits. That is just something I think we can all get behind. And what a better time than in September when we're all kind of resetting after the summer and figuring out what that new routine looks like. And throughout this month, we've also been encouraging um, donations to our Food for Neighbors program, which if you're not familiar, our Food for Neighbors program um, is a program through Festival Foods where we collect donations from our guests um, and then we distribute those donations to food pantries throughout the state. So if you donate either one or five dollars at the checkout at in, let's say, the Appleton store, that money will stay right in the Appleton community. It will go to an Appleton area food pantry and then that food pantry uses that money to purchase supplies and food items at our stores at cost, which is really nice because they can fill in the gaps of maybe what they haven't had donated, um, but they do need um, for the families that they, they serve. So your donations really do make a huge difference right in your community. Um, and we'd love if you'd consider donating to help other families achieve family meals in September and they run really all year long. All right, I'm down to my last potatoes here. Just wanna make sure they're all cut up nicely and then that's gonna be it for our veggies. Losing room on my cutting board here. It's enough chopping but Again, all the prep work is now and there's none later. All right. Okay, so we can go ahead and transfer our roast. You know what, I'm, to make, for ease, I'm gonna take my slow cooker insert out. I'm gonna put it over here. So I'm gonna put the roast right into my slow cooker. Move this back over. All right, so now I'm going to add in all my veggies. Let's see if I can get these in nicely here. All the veggies go right in this slow cooker, right on top of our roast. And then the last step is just going to be adding our couple different liquids and turn on the slow cooker, and that's it. So like we mentioned earlier, today's class is kindly sponsored by Great Lakes Coca-Cola, um, which Great Lakes Coca-Cola serves retailers throughout the Midwest, which would be us, 
um, operating numerous facilities in Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, Minnesota, um, and northern Indiana. Um, they strive to fight innovative ways to donate products and provide support in the communities that they serve, um, which we're so grateful that they are supporting um, our Food for Neighbors program and Family Meals Month um, throughout the month of September and, and joining us for this class today. So we are using um, 12 ounces, so one can if you have, of um, Coca-Cola in this recipe. Um, so what does Coca-Cola do or just soda in general do with adding it to a roast, which might seem kind of like an interesting um, ingredient, but what it does is it helps tenderize the meat. You want to make sure you use regular um, versus like a Coke Zero or a Diet Coke um, because the artificial sweeteners may not yield well in the cooking process and they may kind of alter the flavor. So you definitely want to use regular, use a full can, um, 12 ounces, then we're adding in one cup of low sodium beef broth. So this is a two cup can. I'm gonna add in just one cup. It's about half of it. Perfect. All right, and then I think that might be it for what goes into our slow cooker. You can add some more salt and pepper to taste if you'd like. Give it a little bit more flavor, but ultimately a lot of that flavor is gonna come from both the Coca-Cola and then the broth, which is really nice. Um, so from here, what we're going to do is we're gonna cover up our slow cooker. We're gonna turn it to high, and then we'll let it go for three hours. Obviously, we're not gonna sit on the, the cooking class for three hours. So there are, is one to two steps after this is done cooking. So after about three hours, if you check it, you're gonna wanna check the meat and it should be pretty tender. Now, um, you may need to carve it a little bit with a knife, um, but it should cut up really nicely. Those veggies should be nice and tender. Um, you can try a little bit. Um, and then the last thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your cornstarch, three tablespoons of cornstarch, Mix it with three tablespoons of water. You want to use cold water. Um, you can just use a fork. Just mix it up until the cornstarch dissolves. And then you're going to add that right to your slow cooker. What that's going to do is that's going to thicken the sauce really nicely um, and just kind of provide a little bit different mouthfeel since it'll be a little bit thicker. And then lastly, when you're serving it, um, you can chop up a little bit of parsley if you'd like and add that to the top. And there you go. A super simple meal. So that is what we have for you today. We're gonna again, let this cook, cook. Your house is gonna smell amazing and you're gonna have a really awesome um, meal for tonight. So we wanna thank you for joining our class today. We hope you had fun and we hope you learned a few tips and tricks along the way. Um, if you're taking this class live, you'll be receiving a post-class survey to the email address you provide at registration. Um, we'd greatly appreciate you taking this survey and providing feedback um, so we can make these classes even better in the future. And as a thank you um, for our Family Meals Month classes, we'll be picking one survey responder to win a $100 Festival Foods gift card. So definitely a good incentive to take that survey. Um, to register for upcoming live classes, view previous classes, we have a huge library of all different types of classes from date night to kids in the kitchen. Um, get all the materials you need for these classes. Visit festfoods.com slash classes. Um, also be sure to follow Fest Foods on Facebook and Instagram to be the first to hear about upcoming virtual cooking classes. And lastly, you can find more recipes from the Mealtime Mentors at festfoods.com slash meals. Thank you again for joining us today. Thank you to Great Lakes Coca-Cola for sponsoring our class. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.